uh, can we discharge uh, the battery um, at a higher power than the consumption? So we can actually feed energy to the grid when the prices are high. So we can benefit from uh, high prices uh, yep. on the energy market. There is a setting for it. In uh, there is a setting for it in a solar cloud. Uh, for now, you can preset charge your, uh, let's say, uh, your billing method uh, with the energy company. So we can preset charge like the weekdays and also on the weekends. Hello again. After this short break, uh, I'm in the studio with uh, David. Uh, product manager from SunGrow. Uh, it's a pleasure to host you here. Uh, I would like to uh, hear more about uh, SunGrow products and your intake on the changing uh, energy system. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much to all Melno team for the invitation, uh, which is an absolute honor to me, I must say. Uh, today's topic is the cutting edge solar energy solutions for a sustainable future. And I would try to showcase uh, the most recent uh, updates in our Sangro portfolio, but also existing devices. Uh, I'm David Valigura. I'm distribution product manager responsible for the Central Eastern European region. Uh, I'm responsible for technical pre-sale support. At Sangro, here we have uh, the contact details for me if uh, any of our listeners would come up with any questions after this presentation or you forgot to, to ask uh, uh, during the presentation, please feel free to reach out to me after uh, this event. So uh, without further ado, let's continue. A uh, couple of numbers for those listeners that doesn't know who Sangro is. Uh, the key facts about us uh, in numbers are that we are present in over 150 countries all across the world with more than 20 subsidiaries. Uh, when it comes to gigawatts shipped uh, from the beginning of our operation, which uh, began in 1997, uh, it is a number above uh, uh, 340 gigawatts. And those, uh, those data are for the end of 2022. We're still waiting for the full report for the previous year, but we are expecting this uh, number to only go higher, and it is expected to be uh, of over 400 gigawatts as of right now. Uh, global market share is around 30% and we are constantly hover, hovering above, uh, about this, uh, this value for the past few years. Uh, and the last fact would be that uh, more than 40% of our uh, staff, of all Sangro employees, are working in the research and development, uh, in research and development department. So we are constantly innovating and providing new solutions for our customers. So what we do, uh, here you have brief overview. Obviously, we are the manufacturer of the PV inverter, uh, inverters, but we are also manufacturer of the energy storage. We are constantly supporting our clients with project development. Uh, for the past couple of years, we are uh, focusing uh, strongly on the EV charging solutions. Uh, but moreover, we are also developing hydrogen solutions. Uh, as of right now, we are third biggest hy hydrolyzer manufacturer in the world and together uh, with our Chinese R&D with newly established uh, Sangro EMEA uh, R&D based in Munich we are developing also uh, hydrogen solutions for our businesses. When it comes to performers here we have the brief overview of how it looks both in, in uh, the growth rate, the revenue and the shipments uh, uh, for the past 10 years. And uh, year by year, we are uh, recording constant growth, and uh, we are not, not expecting it to go mm, any lower, uh, only, only higher in the next coming years. When it comes to agenda for today, uh, I prepared three points, first of which will be our existing residential hybrid solution, uh, together with our SHRT inverter, complemented with our SBR battery, uh, and to complement fully this solution, I will also showcase our AC charger, AC home charger of 11 kilowatts. Uh, the second point uh, in this agenda would be the big hybrid uh, plus, uh, plus new battery that is SH SHT inverter together with SBH battery. 
And lastly, I will briefly uh, showcase our newest uh, family, family member as the first power optimizer from Sangro, the SP600S. So yeah, the first point would be the existing FreeFace Hybrid. I will talk on the example of the FreeFace Hybrid, but please remember, please have in mind that we also have in our portfolio single-phase hybrid solutions. Uh, for three-phase hybrid, though, we are coming with uh, four different power levels of 5, 6, 8, and 10 kilowatts. With this inverter, you can storage today uh, or storage tomorrow. Uh, if you decide so to install this device without the uh, mm, Sangro battery from, from the beginning, uh, the inverter will behave simply as a string-connected inverter. Uh, the anti aligning protection would work every time when there is a grid outgauge and you can decide to add up the battery later on uh, in the lifetime of your installation. Uh, yeah, the next point would be the redundancy. That is a funny word, but that's exactly what our inverter do. Uh, with 20 millisecond backup switch to three phase uh, backup as a separate uh, AC output, uh, this inverter is capable uh, of supplementing the loads also when there is a grid outage ongoing. And yeah, also optimized for a self-consumption, the maximum charge and discharge current is of uh, 30 amps with our solutions. Uh, that is quite high on the market. Uh, and with a couple of more amperes, amperages on the, on the DC side, we can just charge up our battery a little bit faster when there is a cloudy day. All right, the other feature will be the parallel connection of our inverters. Uh, the SHRT inverter can be connected up to two inverters in parallel for new installations. That would make uh, the possibility of extending our uh, installation, power of our installation up to 20 kilowatts. It is also retrofit capable. So if you have like some existing uh, installation, not necessarily with the Sangro device in place, you can install uh, our inverter uh, that will work solely as a battery-ready inverter, let's say, uh, so that you can charge our batteries even with the excess power coming from the existing device uh, on the installation. Okay, in that case, uh, as a retrofit, do you need an um, additional uh, energy meter for the other inverter? or? Oh, oh, you don't need the additional uh, meter for the uh, other inverter. All the measurements would be done in the point of connection of the uh, smart meter already included in the delivery of the SHRT inverter. Uh, but if you would wish to uh, display this data from the existing unit in the ISO cloud, then you would need uh, to, uh, to supplement this installation with uh, the, the newest uh, energy meter from ours with two sets of current transformers, one set of current transformers that would go uh, to the point of connection, as before. Second set of current transformers would go to the AC output of the existing inverter, so that the data of both inverters can be displayed in one place uh, in ISO cloud. OK, so it's just for monitoring, not for uh, yeah. work? Yeah, the, the, the basic principle of operation uh, would work simply with the uh, basic direct connection uh, smart meter that is included in the review. Okay. Yeah. So uh, coming next, uh, as I uh, already told you, the uh, energy meter is already included in the delivery, so you don't have to worry about uh, ordering it another one. It is all in a one package, all together with the wireless dongle. Uh, wireless dongle is a communication device that is needed for the first commissioning of our device. Uh, and yeah, also for, for the communication with uh, the ISRA cloud uh, platform. It is capable of 10 seconds refresh rate, uh, and that is something uh, innovative, I would say, in the market, mm, because with that nearly real-time data, you can show graphs in ISRA cloud. When there is uh, some problems ongoing with the installation, the installer can simply just log in into, uh, into ISRA cloud account, and with that real-time data, uh, decide what is the problem and possibly solve it uh, without going on the installation. Um, yeah, moreover, uh, it is uh, possible to connect with Wi-Fi uh, in the house load, but also it is equipped with RS, uh, RJ45 plug, so the Ethernet cable can be also connected to it to provide that stable connection. Uh, and if you wish so, through the same plug, uh, the Modbus commands through the Ethernet, thanks to Modbus TCP protocol, 
um, could be broadcast to, to it to receive data and also to, uh, to read the data from the, from the inverter. So if you wish so uh, to control the, your installation with some external SCADA completely, not using ISO Cloud, uh, then you can do so uh, with this little device. All right, next point would be the SBR battery. Uh, so we have a single solution both for free and single phase uh, hybrid inverters. When it comes to free phase inverters, um, you would need at the least three modules uh, and maximum eight modules on a single tower. That would give uh, 9.6 to 25.6 kilowatt hours. And for single phase inverters, you would need at least two up to six modules that would mm, uh, make the capacity of the battery of 6.4 to 19.2 kilowatt hours. Uh, and yeah, it is of modular design, as I told you uh, already. Uh, it, uh, when it comes to connection in between the module uh, battery uh, modules, it is connected completely without cables, with that easy plug that is uh, that you can see uh, on this slide. Uh, the battery itself can be installed by single installer. The single battery module weighs around 33 kilograms. Uh, and yeah, only power cables that are, uh, that are coming to the BMS of the battery are the regular solar cables of plus and minus, the regular 6 mm square cables, uh, all together with the RS-485 wire for communication. Yeah, but safety first. Uh, our, our battery are of the lithium ion phosphide uh, technology. Uh, that is uh, some kind of LFP battery uh, that is the safest on the market, uh, but also the cheapest despite the quite high price still uh, as, of, uh, as of this technology, uh, just because the supply chain for, for the lithium ion phosphide is, um, is the most developed in the market, let's say. And yeah, it's a safe design uh, because of the redundant management module. When the first would fail, uh, the other is there to, uh, to protect your battery. And when it comes to certificates, we are uh, compatible, not compatible, but uh, we are accredited uh, uh, to the, the UN 39 norm, the American standard, and the European EN, and also rigoristic German uh, VD. So, so if not for now, we are ready for the future too. All right, to supplement full hybrid solution from Sangro, uh, I must say a couple of words about our EV charger. Uh, that is an 11 kilowatt EV charger. Uh, it is an AC uh, EV charger uh, of charging current up to 16 amps for free phase with integrated 6 milliamps DC residual current device. Uh, and with that device, you can easily set a couple of different charging modes all within our ISO cloud. Uh, the most recent and uh, most important, I think, uh, update uh, about this product uh, is the automatic one and three phase switching when you are charging your EV car. Uh, when the power, when the excess power of both battery and the surplus from the PV would go below the 4.14 kilowatts. Uh, the AC charger will automatically switch to the single phase charging so that uh, the, the energy can be still supplemented to your, to your battery in your EV car. Uh, and only when the power, the excess power, uh, drop below uh, 1.38 kilowatts, then the uh, AC char charger will stop its operation. So yeah, that's the uh, new development, let's say, and all came uh, with uh, the newest update. Uh, upgrade of the firmware of the uh, AC charger. All existing AC chargers uh, of that version uh, were uh, updated to, to such software, so this function is available uh, yeah, in all of them for now. So, sorry, what's the time frame uh, for, uh, uh, for charging to switch from three phase to uh, one phase? Uh, from three phase, the charging switch as of, let's say, the uh, protection measure, yeah, mm -hmm. so so that it won't be switching. I think it's somewhere on the slide, let me, s yeah, it's about 30 minutes. So if it's switched by, uh, down to single phase, uh, it won't switch back up to, to the free phase for the 30 minutes, but mm -hmm. same goes on the other hand. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, just to make sure the sun is really there. Yeah? Yeah. 
if the battery is uh, completely discharged, that is. Yeah, yeah but let's go on. Uh, the last point on a, a AC charger would be it is fully integrated within the ISORA cloud. Uh, in the middle screenshot uh, of our application, you can see um, you can see the uh, actual menu for, for the AC charger when you can see the actual charging power uh, and also the time needed to completely charge up the EV battery. And on, on the right hand side, uh, you can see the different charging modes that can be easily, uh, easily changed from the uh, end user account. Uh, and that is green power mode, uh, fast charging mode, preset charging and custom mode. Yeah. All right, the full concept, the full like, like scheme would look like this. The full solution for Sangro. So you have in the heart of the installation, you have uh, the SHRT inverter uh, with connected modules and um, SBR battery on the DC side to it. You can also see the on-grid loads with, uh, marked with blue and backup loads marked with uh, orange. Uh, there is also AV charger communicated by RS485 uh, wire. Uh, you can also see a relay that can control, for example, SG ready heat pump uh, or, for example, some water heater or, or whichever really load you wish to, to control it with. Uh, it's possible because our inverters are also equipped with the digital output, you know, which can bring the signal to the relay so that the, uh, for example, SG ready heat pump can be uh, switched on or turned off. Uh, and yep. Yeah, I forgot about the smart meter. Obviously, the smart meter is there in the point of connection based on the readings of import and export uh, of it. The, the hybrid inverter can uh, control the battery uh, to, 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 give the, uh, to give the power when it's in it and also the other way around to charge it uh, with the excess PV power. Okay, so one question here. Uh, because you said like uh, smart meter is uh, basically controlling the consumption, uh, can we discharge uh, the battery um, at a higher power than the consumption? So we can actually feed energy to the grid when the prices are high. So we can benefit from our high prices uh, yep. on the energy market. There is a setting for it. In uh, there is a setting for it in SOL Cloud. Uh, for now, you can preset charge your. Uh, let's say, uh, your billing method uh, with the energy company. So we can preset charge like the weekdays and also on the weekends, and you can preset charge it uh, by every hour. So for example, from 8 o'clock in the morning to, uh, to, to 6 p.m. in the evening. Uh, so it can be completely done both ways, both for um, uh, charging and discharging of it. Uh, and yeah, that's how it works for now when it comes to like preset charging uh, uh, with the energy prices in mind. We are still developing such solutions, but uh, for now it works with third party companies. We have a couple of installations already in Germany. We have loads of installations in Sweden and in Finland and that works that way. But for now, we third party company, we third party controller that would um, give that data to inverter to tell them when to discharge, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but we are not saying no, we are developing something similar. So uh, please keep that in mind. Okay. Please keep right. that in mind, yeah. All right, so let's go on. And that brings us to the second point of, our, of the presentation, which is the new generation solution of the hybrid inverter. And that is the SHT series. And here is how it looks. Um, the SHT series comes with uh, three different power levels of 15, 20 and 25 kilowatts, all of which are uh, equipped with three MPP trackers, all of which are equipped with five strings with single input for, for, the, for the first tracker. Mm. It is slightly higher current of EMPP, this working current, let's say, of 16 amps. So that brings us really to, to the level of the uh, also be fashion module, let's say, uh, up to 16 amps, there won't be any power cuts, let's say, when it comes to AC power on the AC output of the inverter. All right, with this new device, we uh, finally introducing the AFCI and also PID recovery to the hybrid inverter. 
and thanks to its completely redesigned chassis, it is extra quiet uh, because of just better heat dissipation. All right, all together with new hybrid inverter, uh, there is also new battery, the SBH battery. As you can, uh, can see here, it is also like modular, so stackable uh, in a single tarot up to eight modules. So for this solution, you would need at least two modules uh, up to eight. Uh, each module is five kilowatt hours of usable energy. Uh, yeah, it has slightly, not slightly actually, but L largely higher current of 50 amps coming uh, up from 30. Uh, and yeah, when it comes to backup in this inverter, uh, previously with existing device we, we had mm, completely mm, uh, separate uh, AC out outlets, both for, for grid and the, uh, and, and the backup. With this new device, we've completely redesigned AC plug, this time connected in series, uh, not in parallel, we are able to supplement full house load and having in mind that, for example, on this picture, it, it is installed the uh, 25 kilowatt inverter altogether with the 8 module battery. It can supplement up to 43 kilovolt amps uh, to your house loads. Okay, yeah. So two questions here, maybe. Uh, what happens when there's uh, too high voltage in the grid? So that happens, for example, in Poland. Uh, do the inverter bypass the energy from the grid or it switch uh, off grid and uh, supply uh, the house load from uh, battery and PV? So uh, yes, so for that, uh, uh, so for that, as uh, it is with our existing device, it will need to work. I mean, the product is still in development, uh, but uh, it uh, will work this uh, way uh, when there is a higher a voltage in the grid, the inverter will switch to uh, to the backup output, completely uh, cutting itself from the grid side, uh, and it will, thanks, according to the EN norm, it will try to come back, try to search for for the accurate uh, numbers for the low voltage for the permissible values every 60 seconds. Yeah, mm -hmm. so every 60 seconds he'll try and look what's the voltage of the grid actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. The answer would be, yeah, when there is a high voltage, the inverter will completely switch to the uh, backup outlet mm -hmm. mm, and search every 60 seconds for mm -hmm. uh, permissible values. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the second question is, uh, if something ro uh, wrong with the inverter and let's say we need to replace it, so we need to send it to the service and wait for a new one, what happens there? Like. Do yeah. we have any electricity at our house? Yeah, that, that's a very good question because, uh, yeah, uh, you can think about you connecting all the house load to the, to, to the device that can fault in the time. I'm not saying that our devices are faulty, but it may happen. Uh, but uh, how we did that previously uh, is we suggested to the installer that they should install this fourth pole switch of this generator um, generated grid switch uh, in between the grid and the whole house load so that in case of need it could be easy switch to just supplement uh, the house load directly from the grid mm -hmm. if the inverter would happen to be faulty yeah and then wait for replacement yeah okay yeah so 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 that how it goes coming back to the slide i need to tell uh, about the instant switch over of 10 milliseconds coming down from 20 so it's UPS level right now, uh, and without any flicker of the light, such switch should happen when there is a grid outage. Um, and yeah, that brings us to the next slide, when I want to mention about the parallel operation of this inverter also. Uh, yeah, we are finish, finishing the testing phases of this inverter. Uh, as of right now, uh, it is possible to connect up to two of such, so 50 kilowatt uh, micro installation for small commercial businesses can be uh, can be made with our solution. And also parallel connection of the battery towers will be possible this time. Uh, that would bring us to the maximum of 160 kilowatt hours because single battery tower is around 40 kilowatt hours. Uh, yeah, times four, 160. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one question here. 
Uh, in this case, let's say you have two uh, inverter parallel and two uh, tower of batteries. Would you connect uh, two towers to uh, one inverter, which is uh, the master, or would you connect the, uh, each battery to each inverter? Uh, as you wish, but it would be much uh, better to connect them separately, just because the charging would happen quicker mm -hmm. if they are connected to the separate devices. Okay. But maximum of five, uh, four towers of the SBH battery for now. Okay, sure. Yeah. And yet, in the last and the biggest uh, update on our new solution is that uh, that is the first inverter from Sangro that is capable of completely unbalanced loads. Uh, it is the first inverter in completely unbalanced uh, topology. So when there is uh, yeah, when there, there are unbalanced loads connected to the inverter on the installation, uh, the inverter will supplement the exact power on each phase without outflowing any uh, on any phase to the grid. So with that solution, we are able to, uh, to set up completely zero export uh, for such cases. Yep, that brings us uh, the independence for, from the grid uh, and also that maximizes the self-consumption uh, in the house load, so mm -hmm. uh, both ways, yeah. All right, so, oh, sorry. Sorry, can you tell what's the maximum uh, output per phase in this case? Uh, oh, it's, as I, as I told, we are still, uh, still developing this product, uh, uh, so we need to, to wait for the test results. Uh, yeah, I don't want to yeah, okay. suppose any, but it won't be, you won't be disappointed, guys, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, that's the best product we uh, we ever made. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's not less than one third, let's say, of the uh, nominal it power. It would be closer to the half. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, the last point will be the new ISORA Cloud app. The actually the app for the uh, for the mobile devices is already out from the uh, from the end of the last year. Uh, in coming weeks, there will be also an upgrade to the 3.0 version of the web browser version of the ISRO Cloud app. So, yeah, look up to that. And lastly, as a third point, a uh, quick note about our Sangro Power Optimizer. Uh, here we have the specs of it, but I won't take much. Uh, uh, I won't uh, speak much about them. And the most important facts would be that uh, the modules up to 600 watts, uh, watts can be connected to it. Uh, the maximum input and output current will be of 16 amps, so that's pretty high. Pretty much every module could be connected to it. And the last point would be the safe output voltage of 1 volt. Uh, that uh, voltage would be always present when first commissioning, when first connecting the, the devices just to protect the installer. And also this 1 volt will be uh, in place when there is... Uh, uh, when there is there is some firefighting, uh, uh, let's say, some firefighting uh, mission ongoing in the house load, so that the firefighters are also safe. So when it comes to rapid shutdown, uh, it also limits uh, to one volt per, per, per optimizer zone installation. All right, so our optimizer supports different scenarios. First of which would be the multi-directional installation in a single string. Uh, with that optimizer, we can manipulate with its uh, resistance so that the voltage, so that the current also, but the voltage is for the first scenario the uh, key factor here. The second would be the different string module quantities on the same MPP tracker. Uh, yeah. Same as before, we can manipulate voltage so that different string level can be connected when fully optimizing strings on the roof. And the third point would be the possibility of connected long strings up to 30 modules. Uh, and same, because we are able to, uh, to control that voltage, to lower it down, uh, just good to connect a couple of modules more on the roof. When it comes to installation, both ways, uh, both uh, through these clamps uh, to the module frame, or thanks to, to that cutout in the middle, uh, using the bolt to fix it to the construction under the, the PV modules. Yeah, safe installation, I spoke about it already, one volt when it comes to first commissioning, uh, and also that rapid shutdown capability would limit uh, each optimizer to single volt. 
Uh, yeah, a note on the certification. There are a couple of different standards all across the world. The, uh, all across the world, the most important ones for us would be the German VDE, and also the National Electric Code coming from US and Canada. And National Electric Code tells us to drop the voltage to 80 volts within 30 seconds, and we managed to do that. Uh, we managed to drop the voltage to 30 volts because of the 30 um, PV modules maximum in the string. And we can do that in less than 20 seconds. Yeah. So mod module level shut da shutdown happens so quick. And secondly, uh, yeah, obviously it is uh, it is of IP rating 68, so it can easily work under the surge of water. Uh, and also C5 protection uh, as an anti-corrosive protection layer uh, of our optimizers, but also on all our distribution products. And lastly, the product compatibility. Uh, we'll briefly speak about that. Firstly, it will come uh, and be compatible with the newest versions of the uh, single phase uh, string inverters and hybrids. Secondly, uh, it would be a three phase uh, regular string inverter. As a third point, it will be commercial inverters from our portfolio. And lastly, uh, we are to make tests with uh, the existing hybrid inverters. So that's the roadmap, let's say, uh, in very brief. Uh, it will come with batches, let's say, single phase inverters, string inverters for residential uses, commercial and hybrids. <laughs> Three phase, yeah. At the end, it will be the new newest uh, hybrid inverter, yeah, I we suppose. We are speaking only about the newest version, mm -hmm. just because uh, we needed to uh, to complement our devices with the PLC modules on the DC side, uh, because the communication uh, between the optimizers is coming solely through the PLC, and our products lack this PLC module. So every new uh, newest version of our device will have this PLC module in place. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's actually all I prepared for you today. Thank you so much, and I think one more question from my side. We are ready for <laughs> more questions, yes. Yes, uh, so it's exciting to see uh, SunGrow going into optimizers. Yeah. Uh, do SunGrow see um, op mm, string inverters with optimizers as a better solution than, for example, micro-inverters? Oh, then that's, I, uh, <laughs> once again, very good question. Uh, and I must say, we, I can tell, because we're not saying no to uh, any solution on the market. Uh, maybe from my inside, my note would be that yeah, single optimizer as a single device connected to the single module uh, would be a little bit better on the heat dissipation, I suppose, uh, other than microinverter that is connected to two, four, eight, or mm -hmm. twelve of them. Uh, but yeah, I cannot say it's better or worse. We are not saying no to to any solution, uh, and we are looking forward to developing new products still. So. Mm -hmm. Let's leave it there. For, for this year, you stick with optimizers for now? Yeah. OK, cool. Uh, OK, I think I got all the answers that uh, I for, for the questions I had. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, David. Thank it was a pleasure too. to have you here.